So, I always get asked, how do you make money off YouTube? How do you financially support yourself traveling? Oh, no wait, no, that's a blatant lie. Nobody ever asked me. Anyway, I will proceed to answer this question that nobody ever asked me. Why? Because every other travel channel doing this kind of videos are mostly people doing more personal vlogs with a likely much higher view duration than me. So back before I got monetized, I never really found a good answer for this question myself about my channel's potential. And the only information I thought was somewhat valid or true was completely wrong. I will try and keep this video both informative about monetization in general without losing focus on sharing the relevant data from my channel, which is possibly why you came. The video will be sectioned a bit like this. Number one, how does monetization on YouTube work? And I really don't care about YouTube short videos, so this will not be covered. Two, first full year of income. Number three, top five highest earners. Number four, highest versus lowest month with some data with RPM and overall income. Number five, I'll be covering some other data, watch time, click-through rate, retentions, etc. And for the last one, number six, I will talk about my goals and predictions for 2024. Number one, how does monetization on YouTube work? To keep it short, you need to reach certain thresholds and requirements to get monetized by YouTube. And today we can split it up into either long-form or short-form content. And as I said before, I don't really care too much about shorts, but if you do, you need to reach a thousand subscribers, which is much faster through shorts, and then reach 10 million views within the last 90 days. Also shorts give terrible pay in comparison to long form. For long form content, which is what I technically work with, you still need a thousand subscribers and 4000 view hours within the last 12 months. And again, not unless you break any laws, copyright infringements, or other set rules by YouTube, you should be good to go and apply for monetization. So the big question is, how much money did I make from, from my first full year of being monetized on, on YouTube? Just for some context, my first video was uploaded the 11th of February 2018. So that's more than six years ago I started. By all metrics, since I've been monetized about a year, this is pretty awful by any standards. But anyways, I got here in the end. So I believe that my first day of monetization was the 29th of March 2023. So just to keep it simple, I'll just find it in my calendar and then I'll set it for the 29th this year just to have one straight year. And just to keep it simple, this is how much money I made the first full year of doing YouTube. While being monetized, of course. $1,546, which is about 10,000 Danish crowns, which is relevant to me because I'm Danish. And now we'll be having a look at my top 5 highest earners. And just for the sake of it, I'll just mention that some of my best performers, income-wise, have not been uh, uploaded for more than half a year. So some of those not in the top would probably be in the top five as the year go on. So from 29th of March 23 to 29th of March 24, these are my top five highest earners. Number one is Ekabatos, Greece top 10 best places to visit. Number two is a best Canary Island for you, which is a video about comparing several of the islands in the Canary Islands, I believe four of them. And then we have Samos, Greece. Actually, I think it's Samos, but I have a problem pronouncing it. Pronouncing it. Also a top 10 video. And then we have Lanzarote, top 10 video. And a Fuerteventura, top 10 video. Before I got monetized, the Fuerteventura top 10 video was doing very well, but it was monetized, but it was performing way better than it is now. The Samos top 10 video is currently their best performer, so soon it will overtake the others. 
The most interesting example is my Lanzarote Top 10 Best Places to Visit video because it was dead in the waters at the beginning of its uh, upload. Let's just have a look here. So look at this data. It was a completely dead video. I expected it to be one of my best performers, but nothing happened. 22nd of May, I believe I uploaded it, and not before September, so what, three, four, five months later, it started to slowly take off, and then it, for my standards, kind of exploded, and now it's performing very well. It's a almost 11 minutes long video, so it started to generate some income, so 127 dollars from something that I believe to be dead for the first three of a month, three or four months. Amazing. So let's look at the best and the worst months in terms of income. My best months have been the last three. This is due to some videos performing pretty well. Also because I've had more videos because I've been making videos for a longer time. And because January, February and March is months where you'll see people being fed up with the winter and starting to plan and purchase by the summer holidays. So a lot of people will say that the RPM and the income in these months are pretty low due to money being spent for Christmas gifts in December. I think for the travel niche, it's different because people are getting fed up with the darkness of the winter. They want to be inspired and look forward to the summer ahead. Otherwise noteworthy data is that during the summer, I would say June, July and August is my best month in terms of viewership. However, even though people are viewing my videos a lot, it's because they are either going on a holiday soon or they just came back for one. So they want to relive it through my videos and other videos. But the RPM is slow, the income is low because people already spent their money. And then you have October, November, December, people are still not spending any money and they stopped watching altogether. So I believe if we're looking at the RPM, let's bring in the RPM. I would expect that during the autumn or the fall, that the RPM is going to be slightly less interesting. Let's have a look. 6, 5.7, 5.7. 7. So it's not, not great, but it's probably better than the summer vacation months because that is when nobody's spending any money. During the autumn, they'll spend a little bit more and during the early months of the year you'll spend most of the money. So let's have a look at some relevant metrics that is of high importance to how well you're going to do on YouTube. So let's start with the click-through rate. In Danish this would be this one. My overall channel for the last 90 days is 7.2. It's not great but it's not terrible either. I want it to be, be closer to, to 10, but it won't be within a year that I can make that difference unless I have a very popular video that will go viral. Unlikely, because I cannot control it. Overall views for the last 90 days is 88,560. So why 90 days? Just because I want to look into the last 90 days and see how my, my videos are performing, my Greek videos are performing better as we get closer to the summer and less so when we're getting closer to, to winter, but they are highly relevant for the next five months or so. And then we have the average view duration time is 4.21. So I know I have a lot of video projects ahead, which will be more towards the long-term projecty video, so it'll probably get up a bit. Then we have the average view duration, 27%. I want this above 30, but at the same time, as I just told you, I'll be making longer form videos or long videos, at least eight minutes, some even an hour for from now and for the summer. So there's a chance it might fall percentage wise, but the average view duration will definitely go up. Can I maintain this? Then it will be fine. But within a year, two years, hopefully this will go up above 30. Because I think this will help both in terms of subscribers, viewers and income. So what do I expect out of 2024? So number one is 2000 subscribers. 
Currently I am at 1506. The last month or so it has not been great subscriber wise, so I think this is going to be a bit hard to reach. Some of my more ambitious project videos in the coming time has to take off at least a little bit, otherwise I'm going to fall short, but it's okay. In terms of income, pure money, dollars, I expect to make between 2000 and 2800 dollars, somewhere in between. I'm pretty certain that it will happen, of course, I hope it's close to the $3,000 marks and the $2,000 marks, but I think it's realistic. Then I want to make more bigger product videos, at least 15 product videos. A product video could be anything from, let's have a look. Top 6 most overrated. This would be a project video, I already made 4 of these this year. It has been a try and fail kind of videos, they're not performing very well, but I tried. These big movies, full movies, I also consider these project videos. And then my top 5s, my top 10s, my travel guides are also a project videos. So anything that is not these small one place kind of videos would be a project video. I also want to make a bit more videos from Denmark, from the west coast of Denmark specifically, maybe two or three. Just walking around in the nature areas near the beaches, because they are performing pretty well, but I haven't done a lot of them and they are quite nearby. Why wouldn't I do them? I don't have to travel out to Greece and Spain all the time to, to get away and see tourism destinations because I have someone so close by, also from an environmentally friendly standpoint. Making these kinds of videos I need to include more of what's local to me and nearby. And I want to make a few more videos like this. I don't know where this is going, I haven't made them before so I can make them very well. Maybe I want a camera to be... So you can see me while, while talking, we'll see about that. But I'll probably work on a few more videos like this, more on the YouTube side of things and the hard data and not just showing off, showing off great destinations. What kind of videos that'll be, I have no idea. And this is basically it. I hope it all made just a little bit of sense. I've never made a rambling video kind of like this, not really having that much direction. But let me know if you have any idea for future videos that is necessarily about where to go next but also more behind the scenes video making in general i hope at least you got something out of it because this is the video or at least if someone made this video a little bit more professionally this is the video i needed a few years ago feel free to subscribe if not then don't otherwise see you in the next one goodbye and thank you for watching